In this video, we will discuss about the differences between a regular helium hotspot and a data only hotspot. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel Eigentech. Alright, let us now go through the list of differences. The first one and the most important one is the participation in a proof of coverage. Regular hotspots perform or participate in a proof of coverage challenge, however data only hotspot cannot. So let us check an example. So this is a regular hotspot. Uh, you can see that in the activity tab, it has all this constructed challenge, challenge beaconer, then witnessed bay beacon and broadcast beacon. So all these three defined kind of uh, activities related to proof of coverage. However, in the data only hotspot and this example, so this is a data only hotspot. You can see that in the activity, it has only transferred packets activity and there's corresponding mining rewards. However, note that the regular hotspot can also transfer data packets as you can see here and corresponding HNT earnings. So basically, regular hotspots can earn HNT through proof of coverage and by transferring data. And the majority of the earning comes from proof of coverage currently. However, the data only hotspot can earn HNT only by transferring data. So this is the first and most important difference. The second one is the transmit scale. So regular hotspots have a transmit scale, however data only hotspot doesn't have any. So let's go back to the example here. If we go to statistics tab, you can see a transmit scale here. However, for this one, you can see that uh, there is no such information. The next point. So whether you can have multiple hotspots at one location, you know that uh, it is not a good idea to place multiple hots, regular hotspot in the same location because your transmit scale will, will go down and it's not actually a good thing for the networks. That's why they try to penalize people for putting multiple hotspots at one location. However, it's not true for data only hotspot. You can place as many hotspots as you want because there is no concept of transmit scale for a data only hotspot. The next point is the address. So what is the address? So the address is this string on uh, which which basically identifies your hotspot. So there is a difference. For a regular hotspot, it will always start with 11. Uh, however, for a data only hotspot, it can start with either 14 or 13 as shown here. Next is onboarding or assertion fee. So you know that the onboarding fee is $40 for regular hotspots, which is usually paid by the manufacturers. And the location assertion free uh, is $10. The first one is of course free, but for the next ones, if you want to perform a location reassertion, you have to pay $10 fee, which is subtracted from your HNT balance. And the same for data only hotspot is $10 for on onboarding and uh, $5 for location, location assertion. Then the action of deadline list on the regular hotspot. This is a new thing that many hotspots which are trying to spoof or exploit the network in some way are taken into deny list so that they cannot earn, earn as much HNT. So uh, if a regular hotspot goes into the deny list, its earning will substantially go down. However, a data only hotspot will have no effect if even if it's if goes into the deny list. This is because deny list only affects the proof of coverage challenge and data only hotspot doesn't participate in proof of coverage challenge. That is why it doesn't have any effect on if it goes into the deny list. For example, you can see one such example. This has a label like on deny list and its earnings are pretty small. However, uh, either you will not see it on deny list um, label here or even if it's there, it will have no effect on the data only hotspot. And the last one, which is the most interesting one, uh, actually for a regular hotspot, in order to earn HNT, you need to perform a location assertion. It will not perform or participate in a proof of coverage challenge unless the location is asserted. So you cannot earn HNT without asserting a location. But this is not true for data only hotspot. And this is an interesting feature. I don't know whether it will get changed in future or not. But for now, at least, uh, you can see um, this one. Uh, it doesn't say any location, uh, but it has a hex, which means it has actually a particular location. If you zoom out, it's actually located in the North Sea. Okay, however, uh, the second uh, one here, this is also, if you go here, you can see that um, it is a data only hotspot and it has already earned some HNT through data transfer, but this one doesn't have any location set. So you do not see anything in a string here. And of course it doesn't show on the map. So in this one, you can see there is a hex information. However, there is no hex information. 
So I don't know whether this is going to get changed in future, but as of now, you can see it has transferred packets activity and it's also earning agentries for that. And finally, the price. The price of a regular hotspot varies between $500 to $1000 depending on the manufacturer. However, a data only hotspot is much cheaper. Uh, currently, the prices vary between $250 to $300. Also note that the data only hotspots are not the light hotspots, which are going to be implemented sometime in future. I hope this information was useful to you. If you know about other differences or have any questions, let me know in the comments section. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.